I'm sure most of you are aware of the recent television special that claimed to give an honest, candid, and revealing look into the private life of one of the world's most successful and controversial celebrities, Michael Jackson. The revelations were explosive. The ratings were enormous. But Michael has claimed that what TV journalist Martin Bashir presented was a twisted and edited construction of scandal and innuendo, not a true representation of the interviews that actually took place. In the next two hours, we're going to give you an opportunity unprecedented in the history of television. We're going to show you footage that was never intended to be broadcast. Tonight, the private video from Michael's own cameras. Cameras that shot the Michael Jackson interview. The footage you were never meant to see. As much as I do not speak about my family, I will. Right now. For the first time, Michael's ex-wife speaks out in public. My kids don't call me mom because I don't want them to. You'll find out what really happened during the astonishing incidents with his children in Germany. And, and I've seen you know better. people that flip their kids up in the air, do somersaults and catch them. To be honest with you, I think wait another four or five years, the kids will come in front of a camera and they will defend their daddy. You'll hear about Michael's childhood. One of the things uh, I can see this man tried to do, he tried to, to pin something on me where I was real brutal. You'll find out how Michael really feels about his father. He doesn't know this, but... I walk in the room, and his presence will be there, and I'll faint. You'll hear about Michael's surgery that the other special didn't mention. The whole top of his head caught fire, right in front of my eyes. You'll hear the truth behind Michael's children and their disguises. Michael's very proud of his children. I'm the one who's terrified. You'll go behind the rumors of the Neverland Ranch. I never did. I was spit my wrist if I were hurt and find out how those rumors have driven a family from their home. Gavin called me. He was crying on the phone. He went in gas station. The kid in gas station, they start kidding. Oh, you are the kid doing this with Michael. You slept in Michael. They ruined this kid's life. You'll hear from the people closest to Michael. I've heard um, someone say on the television that no one should be allowed behind those gates at Neverland, especially true. the children. They don't even know what they're talking about. Plus, a surprise revelation from the man behind the Michael Jackson interviews. There'll be a lot of controversy about this. This is tabloids. Well, you be young. I know. Respect it. Well, well, all tonight on the Michael Jackson interview, the footage you were never meant to see, hosted by Maury Povich. With Mr. Bashir's full knowledge, Michael had his own behind-the-scenes camera documenting the major interviews. The quality of the audio and video may be a bit raw at times, but it will enable you to see and hear the interviews as they actually happen and will allow you, the viewing audience, to draw your own conclusions. And while Michael Jackson has provided this footage to us, he has absolutely no control over the editorial content of this program. But who is Martin Bashir? And how did he get an exclusive interview with one of the most reclusive pop stars the world has ever known? In 1995, this little-known British journalist caused an uproar when his sensational interview with Princess Diana revealed details of her extramarital affair. Since then, he has scored interviews with some of England's most notorious newsmakers becoming somewhat of a celebrity himself. Martin, quick word for the evening news. His interview with Jackson was, as he put it, a request to show me the real man. But show me everything. Make nothing off limits. Michael agreed. And the first interview was scheduled for the summer of 2002. In these photos of one of Bashir's interviews with Jackson, you can see the camera that captured the footage you were never meant to see. It's mounted right there on the light stand. This is the view it was capturing at the last interview. And this is the shot from the very first interview at Neverland. The man adjusting the lens. Now this is on. Okay. So can we have silence in the house? Yeah. Is Jackson's own documentary cameraman. Well, I just wanted to clarify that um, is not, it, it was not a secret video. Because right now they're saying that we were secretly videotaping him. But that's not the truth. Uh, Mr. Bashu saw me you know, hooking up the camera. 
and um, <clears throat> you know everybody saw the camera out there and we were just rolling it. We usually do documentary on every you know things that Mr. Jackson does. Do you think that your success has actually made people turn against you? The bigger the star, the bigger the target. And the more popular I became, the more rumors that were created, which none of which were true. I mean, the moment I started breaking the all-time records of the biggest selling albums of all time, they called me weird overnight, strange, wacko, you know, um, they said I'm a girl, um, homosexual, um, uh, he wants to buy the elephant man bones, he sleeps in a hyperbaric chamber, none of that stuff is true. All completely made well, up. I've seen it's where you all sleep. All I've seen where you sleep, exactly. and it's not a hyperbaric chamber. I sleep in a bed. I mean, people would be so surprised how normal and simple the way I live. Most people would have a very hard time thinking Michael Jackson's life was normal or simple. Maybe it's that ranch north of Santa Barbara, California, the 3,000 acres he calls Neverland. Neverland is an extraordinary, a breathtaking, a stupendous, an exhilarating, an amazing place. I can't gather together words to describe Neverland. What inspired you to make a home like this? What inspired me? It was so easy because it was me being myself, creating things that I love. And what I love, kids happen to love, or the child that lives inside, the adult, happens to love. You know, it is so easy because um, I'm just putting behind the gates everything I never got to do when I was a kid. Do you have regrets about the way your life has been? Somewhat. And what do you regret? I was really little, uh, around 11 and 12. I was under contract with Motown, and and I would have to go to the recording studio. I had to go and make these albums because the summer tour was right around the corner, and right across the street from the recording studio was a ballpark, and I could hear the kids, you know, the roar of the crowd and playing and catching ball and having fun and playing tennis. And some of those times I so passionately wanted to just go over there and just play a little bit and not go to the recording studio and sing. Just to, you know, have some fun with the kids. And I couldn't. People say, why is he always with children? Well, I was raised in a world with adults. I, when kids were playing and in bed sleeping at night, I was up doing clubs. I was doing club dates, three in the morning. The striptease would come on after us. You know, I was, uh, we were performing. And we, we, weren't, we didn't have friends. My brothers were like my friends, but we, we worked, we worked, we worked. There was no Christmas. There were no birthdays, and we were very strict to help witnesses. So I'm compensating. Nature made make sure that I compensate for the lost. So when you come behind my gates, you'll see amusement parks, you'll see animals, you'll see everything I never got to do. There's candy everywhere. <laughs> Bob Bashir and his crew were here at Neverland. They got to witness what has become an almost weekly experience. Busloads of children, some from the inner city, some orphaned, some terminally ill but all of them escaping their reality to spend the day at Michael Jackson's creation. I feel totally at home with them. I can talk to them one-on-one -on -one because they don't judge you. You know, they're not looking for anything. They just want to have some fun, you know. And that's the same with myself. And I can connect to that, you know. I can understand that. And the fact that um, 
I missed out on so much as a, as a child. As soon as they come in the room, for me, the room lights What's up. This? I like the sound it makes. <laughs> Is it really funny? Oh my God, they're funny. Didn't one of them say something funny to you yesterday about? Yeah, one one of the boys said to me. He said uh, he saw all the rides and all the amusements, and he said, uh, Michael Jackson, you own all of this? I go, yeah. He said, you paid for all of this? I said, yeah, I did. And you still have money left over? That's what, exactly what he said to me. I said, yeah. I said, yeah. He goes, I can't believe it. He said, I can't believe it. That's exactly what he said. He was amazed that I still had money afterwards. <laughs> We're Make-A-Wish staff members, and we are escorting all the Wish families that came to meet Michael. It's just great to be a part of it and see how happy they are. Everything is free. Theater, amusement park, uh, whatever they want to do, they can do it. But it's not free to you. It's cost you millions of Millions dollars. a year, yeah, millions. But, you know... I get it all back when I see them smile. Sugar attack right now. Peter Pan. I've been in the house. I've seen the statues outside the house. Why is Peter Pan a figure of such interest and inspiration to you? Because Peter Pan, to me, um, represents something that's very special in my heart. You know, he represents youth, childhood, never growing up, magic flying, everything I think that children um, and wonderment and magic, what it's all about. And to me, I just have never, ever grown out of loving that or thinking that it's very special. You don't want to grow up. No, I am Peter Pan. Are you like a Michael Jackson? I'm Peter Pan in my heart. Do you think it would be true to say that you found friendship and inspiration in children that you haven't been able to find in adults. That's absolutely the truth. Really? Yes. Yes. I haven't been betrayed or deceived by children. Adults have let me down. Adults have let the world down. What you're seeing all took place on the day that Martin Bashir and his crew were filming at Neverland. You actually see him in several of the shots being taken by Jackson's camera crew. This was supposed to be a documentary to tell the truth, everything. And if it, I mean, who would bring somebody to his life and open up all the way and wanted to lie about it? You know, if you don't want, if you want to lie about it, don't even do it. You didn't have to do this documentary. Nobody forced them to do this documentary. After a full day spent with children from the Make-A-Wish Foundation at Michael Jackson's Neverland Ranch, what was Mr. Bashir's comment? We'll quote directly from his appearance on ABC's Primetime Thursday. One of the most disturbing things is the fact that a lot of disadvantaged children go to Neverland. It's a dangerous place for a vulnerable child to be. Now, I'm not saying that I saw any evidence of Michael Jackson being involved sexually with any children. Quite the contrary. But what I'm saying is that children who are vulnerable should not be going into the house of a billionaire superstar where they sleep in his bed. As we said, that was Bashir's comment heard on TV by millions of people. But what did Bashir say to Michael Jackson about this day at Neverland? Let's take a look at the footage that was captured by Michael's camera, documenting the interviews. The problem is, you see, nobody, nobody actually comes Make here and sees it. <coughs> but I was here yesterday, yeah, yeah. and I saw it. And it's We're nothing not short of, of a spiritually bit front heavy kind thing. It, he does it all the time. I know, I know, and, but and I've told him. I know. A lot of people see it, but they never They never talk say about it. it. And I've said this to him, and what I've wanted to convey is, is those two things. Yeah. And what we've had the privilege of doing this week is not only talking about the musical genius, but about what we saw yesterday, which was incredible. The woman you see has been Michael's makeup artist for over 20 years. After listening to the glowing praise Bashir had for Michael in this interview, she had a very hard time believing he could call Neverland a dangerous place for children. I've never read about that. I didn't even... It's so hard for me to imagine that Michael 
opened up the gates not only to Neverland but to his heart to Bashir. And uh, I really thought that Bashir got it. It's getting worse. And, like, he does, I mean, I can't tell you. Skipping I, I know Martin, Martin. Martin. Yeah. You never see anybody oh, talk about that stuff. The pep he, around a bit, so a bit when, when, more on Martin. Like like but when this. he's talking about the things that he's uh, passionate uh, about, it's obvious that it's, it's in his eyes. Well, yeah, this is what's in his heart. People usually don't ask these questions. That's it. And if, if they do, they don't, they don't make it. They don't make it in the papers. They don't make it on the interviews. It's all the negative stuff. Stupid rumors. And they and they they cut story. they cut questions out and they yeah. just like that's they make it. That's why that's why he doesn't even do interviews sure, anymore. Do you think the they there? twist I everything. Twist. From the moment I met him, I mean, I remember. How can people be so cool? That I read an article it's that I was crying, and he goes, uh, "It's disgusting." <laughs> well, we ain't doing that here. Now, what could make an award-winning journalist have such a different opinion between what he would say on the air and what he would say in the interview footage, not included in his special? It appears that after Mr. Bashir had called cut for his own camera crew, he may well have forgotten that Michael's camera was still recording his every word, a possibility supported by a written request from both him and the producers of his special to make Michael's footage available for their review. The different opinion expressed by Mr. Bashir regarding the safety of the underprivileged children who visit Neverland is only the first of several contradictory moments captured on tape, all of which you will see and hear on this program. When we come back, an exclusive interview with Michael's ex-wife. As much as I do not speak about my family, I will. Right now. Michael makes a long overdue confession. You had sex with Debbie. Yes. I know that's difficult for you, for me to say, because you're yes. so embarrassed. Yes. <laughs> but you, you actually had sex with her. You can see yes. those children. Yes. And Debbie tells us about the result. And then his son was born. And I look on his face. Plus, a very surprising revelation from Michael's private cameras. All when we return to the Michael Jackson interview. The footage you were never meant to see. In addition to the never-before-seen footage from Martin Bashir's interviews, we have also been allowed unprecedented interviews with some of the people closest to Michael Jackson, people who have turned down very lucrative offers to tell the inside story of life behind the Neverland gates. They break their silence for the first time, and not for money. No one interviewed for this show received any payment to tell their story. Their reason for appearing here is to tell the truth as they see it. And the person who has most avoided the glare of the spotlight is the person who was perhaps the closest to Michael, the woman who was his wife and the mother of his first two children, Debbie Rowe. What's happened in the past is things have been taken out of context, twisted around. If I can help straighten it out, as much as I do not speak about my family, I will. Right now. When I was talking to Prince one day, he said to me that uh, he, he didn't have a mother. He said he didn't have a mother? Yeah, I said, Prince, where's your mummy? And he said, I haven't got a mother. That's right. Did you tell him to say that? Mm. What do you think he means when he says, I haven't got a mother? I could say he didn't have a mother. My kids don't call me mom because I don't want them to. They're not... They're Michael's children. It's not that they're not my children. 
but I had them because I wanted him to be a father. I believe that there are people who should be parents, and he's one of them. And he is such a fabulous man and such a good friend, and he's always been there for me, always, from the day I met him. I could do something for him, and this is what I wanted to do. Most people think Michael and Debbie's relationship was very short term. Actually, they met over 22 years ago. Was it intense, Bam? No. No, it was over time. It was over time. I think it was 18 years, 17, 18 years that I knew him when I, when I had Prince. In that time, they've gone on some very unusual outings, often with Michael in disguise. Yeah, he'd call, what are you doing? Nothing, what are you doing? When I go to the video, yeah. You know, I, we'd sneak out without security. We got caught. I was like, oh my God, this is like a Beatles film. We're getting chased by people. We'd have to call security and bail us out. But yeah, we'd, we'd go out and do stuff. So go sneak him into ranch. sneak him into premieres and and things. Um, yeah, we had a good time. We had a good time. He's always a lot of fun. When did Michael start talking about wanting to have kids? Wanting to, was this when he was still with Lisa Marie? Or? No, they had um, they had broken up, and I was trying to console him because he was really upset, and he was upset that you know, he said he really wanted to be a dad, and I said, so be a dad. And he looked at me puzzled. And I said, let me do this. I want to do this. You've been so good to me. You're such a great friend. Please let me do this. I said, you need to be a dad. I want to do this. And he, no, no, no. I nagged him into it, if you will. She's a wonderful person. To she, she knew that Michael Jackson loves children. Yeah. And she knew that Michael Jackson wanted children. That's why. And she you was... You need to be a dad. Right. She said you needed to be a dad. More than she needed to be a mother. Yeah. And she wanted to do that for me as a present. And if you're talking about romance, maybe then, if you want to have a, a marker, if, if that makes you and... The rest of America feel that they need a marker, and you could probably use that. Once Debbie's pregnancy became common knowledge, the tabloid world had one burning question. Did they, or didn't they? The, the, the first two crystal pairs from Debbie, which was natural conception. You, you had sex with Debbie? Yes. I know that's difficult for you, for me to say, because you're yes, so embarrassed. Right <laughs> but you, you actually had sex with her, you can see yes, those children. Yes, yes. From the first moment Debbie learned she was pregnant, Michael warned her of what was to come. He said, you don't know what they can do. And I said, oh, Michael, come on. We're having a baby. Normal people have babies. We're having a baby. Come on. I, how, can, how can that be weird? We're having a kid. That, if anything, that's beautiful. That's wonderful. That's great. Boy, was I wrong. I found out at one point a picture of me pregnant was worth half a million dollars. To who and why? Have they never ever seen someone pregnant before? Am I supposed to look different pregnant because it's Michael's baby than someone else? As you've heard, the decision to have Michael's child was easy for Debbie. The actual birth was another matter. And we were very excited. Michael was definitely more excited than I was. You know, he was so excited when we had a contraction. And he was there. We had videos, we had music, you know. And it was long, it was 23 hours. And I have a very colorful language. <laughs> and every time I went to say something, Michael would cut me off with, shoot, or fudge. Oh, he doesn't like cursing. Or <laughs> he didn't think it was necessary yeah. when there were other, other words would do. So, but he was there the whole time, held my hand, um, stroked my head, 
I think I puked once, and I was so embarrassed, and he was like, stop, you're fine. This is beautiful, this is wonderful. I said, I'm going to die. No, you're not going to die, this is great. Okay, we're crowning, you know, and Michael, bam, he's right there. And he goes, oh my God, this is so beautiful. Now, having come from a medical background, there is no way, blood and stuff, there's no way, it's, it can't, it, sorry, I don't come from that background. It's like, Michael, it can't be that beautiful. Oh, he was welling up. And then his son was born. And the look on his face. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> I'd never seen him that happy. And that's, that's, that's what made it wonderful for me, was to see the look on his face. The birth of Prince Michael was soon followed by a sister, Paris. Yeah, we were kind of told we should wait. You know, I guess there's a waiting, a suggested waiting time, but I was flying to Paris all the time. That's actually how she got her name. That's where she was conceived. Do you not think, though, that your children would benefit from contact with their mother? No, but she doesn't. Uh, it's private information. She doesn't. She's, she, she can't handle it. She can't handle her own children? Yes, it's, I can't reveal that because I don't want to make anybody upset. While Michael may seem reluctant to discuss Debbie's absence from their children, Debbie had no reluctance whatsoever. People don't understand that. And they want a traditional, they, they think that something has to be traditional, and they have this notion of, of beaver cleaver. That's, that wasn't reality in the 50s, and that's not reality you know, in the 21st century. We have a non-traditional family, and if it makes people uncomfortable, it's a shame that they're not more open. We are a family unit. Michael and I will always be connected with the kids. I will always be there for him. I will always be there for the children. And people make remarks, oh, I can't believe she left her children. Left them? I left my children? I did not leave my children. My children are with their father, where they're supposed to be. She preferred them to be with me than with her. So, this mother carries both children for nine months mm -hmm. in her body, okay. and she gives birth to them, mm -hmm. and she prefers that they have nothing to do with her. Mm -hmm. Split up because I it got to a point where I couldn't deal with it. I couldn't deal with the fact I couldn't go to the grocery store for two reasons. One, I'd get followed. Two, I'd have to look at crap on the newsstands that are right as the, at the register as you go out that wasn't true. You know, I, I, I wasn't used to it. I like doing things for myself. Um, Michael's more than generous. He said, we don't have to go to the grocery store. But I want to. I really want to. I want to go back to what I can go back to. That was what I was used to. That's where I'm comfortable. Doing this is very uncomfortable for me. Talking about these things is extremely uncomfortable for me. But it's hard when you're an entertainer, you know. It's hard to have a marriage and... Uh... I mean, one day I'll be married again, but it's too soon. I went through two tough divorces. So I'm married to my fans. I'm married to God. I'm married to my children. I'm married to life. Coming up, the notorious incident that had the whole world talking. This is in the cabin for like two seconds, but when it gets on the news, we slow it down. Michael's mother reveals what it was like to grow up in the Jackson 5. Joseph didn't beat him or anything like that. We just disciplined him out of love. And we find out why Bubbles had to go. Because since they get to an age like, like teenage kids do, where they want to challenge their parents. 
All when we return to the Michael Jackson interview. The footage you were never meant to see. Martin Bashir arrived to film Michael and his children. Bashir was immediately confronted with one of the major worries of celebrity parents, the horrible danger of kidnapping. Consequently, as a security measure, public appearances by Michael's children require that their faces be hidden behind masks or veils. Because you don't let anybody don't see the children. Look, I don't want, no. I don't so want a Lindbergh baby. Somebody no. took Lindbergh's baby, Charles Lindbergh's baby, took him in the forest and burned him to death. Okay, so I don't want that to happen to my children. Bashir's repeated questioning fails to establish one important fact. Whose idea it was to wear them? I obviously have some influence as their faces are still covered. That was my request, not his. Michael's very proud of his children. I'm the one who's terrified. I'm the one who's seen the notes someone's going to take his children. They're not. They're not. Whatever, whatever can be done, they're not. There's nothing more terrifying than looking at a piece of paper that says, I'm taking them. And I said, you know what? I wore a scarf, no big deal. Pretend it's Halloween. I don't want people seeing them. Because the press are, they can be very mean. I don't want them to grow up psychologically crazy because of the evil things they can say to them. I want them to be normal. That makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. Right? Yeah, it does. It does. And I'm sure at some point he will say, you know, to the children, do you want to wear the scarf? I will have immediate heart failure, you know, but, you know, he's not going to make his children do something they don't want to do. He's not that kind of a parent. Not at all. And I, I, I truly don't see why everybody focuses on that. I mean, is it a fashion statement? Are the scarves not matching? You know, we'll work on it. While some people may have a hard time with the intense security measures Michael and his family have to follow, there was one particular occurrence in Germany that had many people questioning his children's safety. Take, for example, what happened in Germany where there was a huge outcry yeah. and you suffered a great deal of negative comment in the press. Yeah. Was there no one in your group who said, Michael, even though you're not going to damage your child and you would never harm your child, but Michael, if you dangle blanket over a balcony, you are going to be severely criticized. No, because... Was there no one in the room who would say, Michael, don't do it? My governesses were up there. And they didn't say no? No, because was, I was holding that baby strong, hard, tight. Now, that's exactly and, what I'm saying, though. You know, and I know better. And, and I've seen you know better. people that flip their kids up in the air and do somersaults and catch them. And, you know, I get caught up in the moment. Let's hold it on tight. Just let them give away. And, uh, but this is, and it happens for like two seconds. But when it gets on the news, they slow it down. They don't show the crowd. They make me like I'm just a centric idiot dangling his baby over a balcony like a nut. I think the media took took it and ran mm -hmm. like they do everything else yeah. and it's just like oh my god oh my god he's not dropping the baby please please they blew it up into something it's not that we know about so it. misunderstood uh, explain it what don't we know about what should we know about him we don't know all right i'll tell you from the very beginning good he had such a grip on that child and if you look at it again he's got that tie child so tightly held under the armpits. Okay. You're showing it now. Yeah, he is. Got it pretty tight under his arm. Governess was up there. Security was up there. 
other people. I took my other children up there and did the same thing. Like I said before, he's very proud of his children, you know? And to listen to his fans all night long, they're so adoring and so loving and loyal. And they'll be there all night. And they wanted to see the little one. And he showed them the little one. Nothing inappropriate. May not have been the best thing he's ever done in his life, <laughs> but certainly... I think it was made too big a deal of. Even now you're happy that you dangled yeah. him over the... Not happy that I dangled him over the balcony, no. You're I'm not happy, happy that I let the kids no, but that... waved. In spite of his admission that he was not happy about the incident, it still did not seem as troubling to Michael as it did to people around the world. A point Martin Bashir made both in his TV special and in his comments on Primetime Thursday after the show aired. He said that they are restricted. They are overly protected. I was angry at the way his children were made to suffer. What he said about Michael's parenting skills in the footage that was not aired appears to paint an extremely different picture. And we must stress, what you're about to see and hear happened during Bashir's final interview with Michael long after the incident with the baby on the Berlin Hotel balcony. One of the things that I noticed about you over the last year is your relationship with your children. And I have to say to you, and I didn't know you before, and you haven't put on a front, your relationship with your children is spectacular. Hello. <laughs> and in fact, it, it almost makes me weep when I see you with them, because mm. your interaction with them is just so natural, so loving, That's so lovely. caring. Thank you so much. And everybody who ever comes into contact with you knows that. I'm crazy, I'm a diver. Mm. I'm crazy about it. And I tell them. I look into their eyes every day. I make sure I do it. I say, look at me. I say, I love you very much. In the eyes. What they actually say to you is they love you and you say I love you more. That's yes. what you say every yes. single time. Say that, right? That's your phrase and I've heard it. I've heard it once, I've heard it a million times. Yeah, and um, they say they say such sweet things sometimes like, and I didn't tell them to say it. They see it all the time. Like Prince will come to me and say, Daddy, thank you for giving me a brother. All the time. You know, parents will say that too. Thank you for giving us a brother. You know, and they, and uh, I would like to have more children. You know what? If he called me tonight and said, let's have five more, in a heartbeat. You would do it again. In a if heartbeat. He asked you, but... In a heartbeat. Now, what could have persuaded one of the world's most reclusive superstars to grant an interviewer and a camera crew entrance into his life. Now, according to Jackson, it was to answer many of the important questions that tabloids and fans have been speculating about for years. As you've seen, not all of those important answers made it on the air. And as for the not so earth shaking ones, well, they were edited out too, like the whereabouts of Mr. Jackson's former constant companion. Where is Bubbles now? Bubbles is, um, he's with a caretaker with like 40 to 50 other chimps because chimps they get to an age like like teenage kids do where they want to challenge their parents. Like if uh, your father tell you to do something you go why? Why do I have to do it dad? And chimps are very much like that too. They'll challenge you and it can become dangerous in a way. You know, and if and if they get angry with you and decide to take you on, uh, it's no it's no match. I mean, they're very very strong. If they they can take your finger off. They're very powerful. But while Bubbles was living at Neverland, Bubbles, the other animals, and Michael were virtually inseparable. Many people made fun of me with my animals. You know, if I come home from a hard day at the studio and I come home to my deer or my chimps, and I can hug them and. They don't ask you anything, they don't complain, you know, they don't gossip. They just want a hug and some love and, and get on with it. You know, where's the pizza? Get the, whip out the ice cream. Because the chimps, they love snacks. And, uh, you know, they run around and they help me clean the room and uh, they help me fix up things, you know. And uh, they're very, their DNA is literally identical to ours if you look in the microscope. Uh, and they're amazing.
Chimps would help you clean the house. Yeah, yeah, they help me clean up my room. They help me dust. Uh, they do windows. They flush the toilet after they use the bathroom. And uh, they... you, you let the chimps use your own bathroom? Sure, yeah, of course. Bubbles would go himself. And he'd sit at the table and he picks up his spoon and his fork and he eats and he's very polite. And they're very intelligent. While in Berlin with Jackson, Martin Bashir was invited to accompany Michael and his two children on a trip to the zoo. But because someone had evidently tipped off the press, the paparazzi were out in force, causing chaos and a potentially dangerous situation for the Jackson family. Do you know it took us three and a half hours to get in and out, and we spent four minutes in front of the gorillas? It was chaos, Michael. Yeah, it was chaos. It, you filmed it, right? Yeah. I was in the middle of it. Our cameraman fell over. Yeah. And, and at one point, Prince got um, hurt by someone's umbrella. Yeah. 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 Do you really think it was worth the pain of three and a half hours for four minutes in front of the gorillas? Well, I'm not a foreseer of events. I'm not a soothsayer or a proverb of any kind. But I didn't know that was going to happen like that. As you've seen and heard from Michael's behind-the-scenes camera of Bashir's interview, Bashir seems to express a genuine concern for the welfare of Michael's children and raises the question as to Michael's apparent lapse of parental judgment. Bashir comments, it was no kind of trip for two young children and everyone could see it but Jackson himself. But what Bashir doesn't include is Michael's explanation that Michael was informed that the zoo would be closed during his visit. I go to the zoo all the time. I go usually when they close it down. And they told us this would be closed down. And they didn't. They left the gates open. And fans and people start pouring in. But in fact, what the owner said, because I, I was there, he actually said that his view was at the end of the normal opening hours, he would have closed the zoo and then just opened it for you and your family. But you decided not to go then. You wanted to go in the day rather than... It's not true. Is that not true? It's not true. That, that was what I he said. I wanted to go in the day, especially if I have a problem with the sun. And, and well, it was winter in Germany, so it wasn't... Yeah. It wasn't Nighttime summer. would have been much cooler. Yeah. But wouldn't it have been better to have gone at night? Yeah. So why didn't you? I never knew that was the proposal. I thought we had a slot and that was it. This was like just a mis misunderstanding from the zoo park and you know Michael's people and they thought the zoo was going to be closed but it wasn't but that's ho that whole thing was not a big deal I mean w he, he goes through that all the time coming up Michael's video cameras capture a very revealing moment so they're so quick to call you strange and weird but it's almost as if you're forced to be different Michael's father reacts to Bashir's special well one of the things uh I can see this man tried to do. He tried to, to pin something on me where I was real brutal. What caused the surgery the other special didn't tell you about? He was so badly burnt on the top of, he was so hit, the whole top of his head caught fire right in front of my eyes. The devastating disease that Michael claims turned him porcelain white. He said I was putting on cream to make myself lighter. That's not true, I have a bit of And friends of Michael who were forced to leave their home all when the Michael Jackson interview, the footage you were never meant to see, continues. We'd like to remind you that while Michael Jackson provided much of the footage you are seeing tonight, he has absolutely no editorial control over the content of this program. In the past hour, you've seen a British journalist ask some tough questions. What hurts you most? When they lie. The lies. The complete lies. And some tougher questions. You, you had sex with Debbie? Yes. 
I know that's difficult for you, for me to say, because you're so embarrassed. <laughs> you're about to hear Michael Jackson's family rally around him, voicing their support. They can go and talk to these children all they want. They're not going to find anything. What they need to do is leave him alone. And voicing their disagreement. I hear Michael saying that he's lonely. But back in those days, Michael had his brothers. He had all his brothers to play with. You've seen Michael's ex-wife come forward for the first time with expressions of emotion. I've never seen that happen. And that's, that's, that's what made it wonderful for me. And expressions of strength. I cannot leave my children. My children are with their father, where they're supposed to be. But most of all, you've seen Michael Jackson's own private cameras catch the good. I think God out there himself in between the children. The bad. If you dangle blanket over a balcony, you are going to be severely criticized. The strange. You let the chimps use your own bathroom. Sure, yeah, of course. Bubbles would go himself. And the strangely human. I am Peter Pan. Oh, you thought you're Michael Jackson? I'm Peter Pan, my heart. But what you've seen so far is only the beginning of the Michael Jackson interview. The footage you were never meant to see. In addition to revisiting the interviews with Michael Jackson that were contained in the ABC special, we've also asked members of the Jackson family to comment on the information that the special chose to include. While the Jacksons are a very supportive family, not all of what they have to say is in complete agreement with Michael. And many of the comments you'll hear have never been revealed publicly until now. We tried to uh, get above all of this, the way of being united together. We, we don't like what you know, some of the things are being said out there, but when you're number one out there all over the world, you get those kind of pot shots at you at all times. You've been so successful, and you've amassed so much wealth, you never need to work again. And yet you don't seem to be able to enjoy it. Um, it seems that you're restricted somehow. I enjoy it through my children. I enjoy But I'm talking about you. Um, you just don't seem to enjoy it. Enjoy what? Enjoy your success. Enjoy your wealth. It's hard to, in, I can enjoy it behind my gates, but I can't go out and enjoy it because it becomes work all over again. Working has been Michael's life from the time he was five years old. Oh, darling, I was right to let you go. And as we've already seen, missing out on his childhood continues to affect him to this very day. You often seem very lonely. Is that, is that true? I used to be very lonely. Painful lonely. So bad. You have no idea. I used to walk the streets looking for people to talk to. I hear Michael saying that he's lonely, but back in those days, Michael had his brothers. He had all his brothers to play with. Yeah, all of them. Oh, and so, uh, you know, and the kids that he bought all the candy around, he buy so much candy and kids would be in a circle, standing around in a circle, and they all be eating candy off the allowance I had given him. But one thing he enjoyed to see those kids eating that candy, he'd be laughing. Weren't you surrounded by your family, by musicians, by people wanting to be your friend? You were an international superstar. How can you say you had no friends? Because those people spoke to me on a language on another level that was musical, that was entertainment, but to get away from that, to separate oneself from that, and to try to discover the fun things about life. When do you feel that? When do I feel lonely? Uh, I mean, I can be, you know, usually in hotels, when there's thousands of fans chanting, you're out in the street, you know, using sleeping bags, and they're chanting how much they love you and everything, and you can't get out, you feel trapped inside, and 
and you just cry, you feel lonely, you know? And there's all that love out there, but still you really do feel trapped and lonely that you can't get out. And if you go to a bookstore, if you go out, if you go to a club, which I don't like clubs, you know, every book you buy, they wonder, why are you buying this? Why is Michael Jackson buying this? Why is he reading this? Or you go to the club, as soon as you go in there, every song is my song, as if I want to hear my music. <laughs> and everybody starts chanting for me to dance. So it, it becomes a show all over again. So you can't go anywhere. So wherever you go, you, you know, that's not much of a life, is it? I know, it's difficult. And, it's, and I don't want to complain like I'm complaining, because it comes with the territory, but I don't think people understand the other side that comes with it. So they're so quick to call you strange and weird, but it's almost as if you're forced to be different, because it's, it's not normal life, you know? I can do the normal things, uh, go to the store and buy a piece of bread, a piece of candy or something. He can't do that. So that would cause you to become a recluse or to sort of be withdrawn. Do you not sometimes wish that you could go to the local store and of course. buy yourself some food and come back or of go course. to a bar? Of course. I want to go to the market, like one of those markets, and take one of those carts and throw some food in there and go down the aisle. I would love to do that. Can you do that? No. Of course not. Of course not. <laughs> I tried in the... Uh, Every, the whole place stops, you know, and everybody's chanting and getting your autograph, and it, it's hard. It, it doesn't work. That's why I love putting on disguises. One of the disguises Michael would wear in public was from his music video, Ghost. A makeup process that took several hours and would turn him into a completely unrecognizable and very large white man. I sit on a bench at Disneyland, a fat suit. I sit there and I learn, I love it, I learn so much. Watching people, studying people's characters. And that's what I like, I like going inside. And that's the same thing as performance. You can tell right away when an artist, it's, you can read it on her face when she's dancing, she's counting one and two and three and four and five and six, and you can see it. But when you, that's the wrong concept for dance. Dancing is about feeling, not about thinking. So when they count, they're thinking. To feel, become the bass, become the drums, become the guitar, the strings. You just become a oneness, you know? That's very important. But that's real. But that's Michael Jackson talking as a performer. I love performing. But that's not... I wish I could sleep on stage. But, but that's not Michael Jackson the person. One of the most compelling and revealing lines of questioning that Martin Bashir pursued had to do with the strict discipline that Michael and his brothers endured at the hands of their father. Unfortunately, this is footage that Mr. Bashir and his producers have not allowed us to show you. But we can tell you that it was a very emotional description of beatings with belts and the cords from irons. You remember when you said to me that you just wanted to run away from your father? I hid. I used to hide. Well, one of the things uh, I can see this man tried to do, he tried to, to pin something on me where I was real brutal. And raising these guys, Jermaine and all the rest of them, they all got whippings, they get, but they didn't get no beatings, you know. They got whippings. And we were disciplined in the way that which he knew. And during that time, all children and parents at the time, they whipped their kids. We had to be in before the lights were on at night, and we had to ask for, for things. And I thought it was great because it allowed us to become what we became. We never got on drugs. We never got in, in trouble. And, uh, and I see the difference from my upbringing as when I came to California and friends that I went to school with, how they would curse the parents out and, and slam the door and disrespect them. Joseph didn't beat him or anything like that. We just disciplined him out of love. And the Bible says if you love a child, you will discipline them. The discussion of the strict discipline and verbal abuse by Michael's father went on for almost eight minutes in Mr. Bashir's finished special. But what he did not include was a short but very revealing comment from Michael about his father. He just 
I don't think how he how much he hurt me when he was little, but he's a genius. The man is a genius. At the same time, he is a genius. He really is. But Michael, he injured you when you were a child. Yeah, but but look what came out of it. Well, maybe, maybe I wouldn't have the affection for the kids that I have today. I wanted to help them. Without a doubt, one of the most controversial topics of Michael Jackson's life is his relationship with children. The scandals and rumors surrounding allegations made against Jackson are the subject of seemingly endless speculation. As we told you before, Michael Jackson has no editorial control over the content of this program. What you see and hear is intended to be an unbiased presentation that allows you to draw your own conclusions. Some years ago, you yourself were about to embark on a, on a tour and allegations were made about you and children. Yeah. What about 1993? What happened? What was Michael Jackson doing? Because they don't know me. They don't know me. All that was false. A complete innocent guy. I would never do that. I would spit my wrist before I would hurt a child. He would never hurt a child. Never. It's not in him. It's... It, no way. He would never do anything inappropriate with a child. It's, it's the furthest thing from his mind. When those allegations came, 93, I think it was, it was devastated. I mean, talk about going for the jugular. At every opportunity, the media has dissected and manipulated these allegations to reach their own conclusions. I ask all of you to wait and hear the truth before you label or condemn me. I um, watched Michael after they accused him of that child molestation. But um, at first he was a little lonely and all, but he never stopped um, because he knew it wasn't the truth and he never stopped loving children. No, that's what I admire about him. He keeps going. He's not going to give up. And he's going to still give to all of us. I just know it. And Brashears will come and go, you know? Michael will live forever. Apparently there's some confusion with sleeping in beds. My favorite thing to do is to sit in bed and watch TV. If you're coming over, take your shoes off, get on the bed, or watch the TV. Michael was never indicted, I said he was never charged, he was never anything. Now. They came in this house, right, and they tore this house apart. They went in my mother's safe. They went in, they, 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 they <laughs> tore it up, and they went in my mother's hyper pressure pills, and they were looking at, I mean, just what were they look, looking for? They were trying and trying to try to get some crap on Michael that was not true. What hurts you most? When they lie, the lies, the complete lies, and it hurts. And it hurts me because I know there's children out there who has to hear that crap. Why do people do that when all you have done is brought some of the most beautiful music, most beautiful popular music that many of us have ever heard? Why do people want to judge you if you've done, all you've done is been an artist and, and brought wonderful music? Because with success, people become jealous. It hurts to be misunderstood. No matter how much you try to put people on track, there will still be some judgment. Things said that it's so far. Following the broadcast of Mr. Bashir's special, the speculation about what went on in Jackson's private life was once again headline news, primarily due to the story of Gavin, a young man who had reportedly been dying of cancer. Gavin was somebody who was diagnosed with cancer. Doctors gave him, I think, three weeks or one month to live. One of his last wishes was to meet Michael, a request fulfilled through Los Angeles businessman Jamie Masada. Then he said to me, he said, under his breath, he said, I want to meet Michael Jackson. 
at that point, I didn't know Michael Jackson. I know I, I just came out of the room, uh, I started crying. I didn't know what to do. I called Neverland, I said, is any way you can get a chance to call the kid? Then I'll come in next day, and I said, Gavin, he'll have a little smile on his face. I said, Gavin, oh, what's going on? What's... He said, Michael, call me. Gavin and his family formed an immediate bond with Jackson, creating an atmosphere that many believe played a large part in Gavin's recovery. You know, two and a half years ago, the doctor, they said two more weeks is dead. Now he's alive. His appearance on the Bashir special showed a seemingly healthy and happy young man, clearly very fond of Jackson. And while Mr. Bashir did touch on Gavin's amazing recovery, many believe that the real focus was on Michael's relationship with the young man, especially the revelation that they had spent the night in the same room. The thing is upset me right now. The reason I'm giving you in the interview, because Gavin called me, he was crying on the phone. He went in gas station. The kid in gas station, they start kidding. Oh, you are the kid doing this with Michael. You slept in Michael. It's, it's horrible to do to a kid. This kid been through life. He's been through horrible life so far. Since Mr. Bashir's documentary aired, Gavin and his mother have gone into seclusion after being bombarded by requests for interviews from tabloids around the world. This statement released to the press by Gavin's mother says, I'm appalled at the way in which my son has been exploited by Martin Bashir. The relationship that Michael has with my three children is a beautiful, loving father, sons, and daughter one. To my children and me, Michael is a part of our family. In addition, she is considering action against Mr. Bashir for including Gavin in his special without parental consent. You can only take the lies for so long. And I've reached my limit. And that's why I'm doing this. I'm not here to defend my boss. I'm here to tell the truth. I didn't really know how you behave with the people who come to the ranch and, and come to your home. I hadn't seen it. And you were the most generous person. But I looked around here yesterday, and some of the people really appreciated it. But others were greedy. Mm. Others couldn't help themselves. Mm. Do you sometimes despair of human nature? Yes. One of the topics repeatedly brought up in Martin Bashir's interviews is the same one that has been the subject of speculation by countless tabloids, talk shows, and comic monologues for over 20 years. Michael Jackson's changing appearance. Having surgery or, or changes or whatever, cosmetic surgery or anything like that. People have that sort of thing in this country all the time. All the time. People go on a weekly basis to have all things changed. Time. And most celebrities, most movie stars, you know. So why is it such an issue that you do that? But the fact that they said I had, um, like I'm overly obsessed with it. It's not true. That's not the things they've said that I've done are not true. I haven't had my eyes done. I haven't had my cheekbones done. I haven't had my lips done. I haven't had my chin done. That's a lie. They just go too far. In the final interview eight months later, Martin Bashir is still doggedly pursuing rumors of Michael's plastic surgery. You look fine. You look fine. I'm one of the stinky. Oh, that, that's a nice But you don't look stinky. An area of his life Bashir said he felt Michael had been less than honest about. You know, you're, you're, you've physically changed, haven't you? The photographs of you, if I look at them No, it's from... called adolescence. It's called growing and changing. Yeah, but even the shape of your face has changed. No, it has not. I've had no plastic surgery on my face, just my nose. It's helped me breathe better so I can hit higher notes and have clear. The press decide to add on all this stuff. Nothing's been done to my eyes, cheekbones, chins, lips, nothing. They made it all up. Do you think that people do go too far with plastic surgery, generally? Do you think well, it's, it's become... Well, it's So why are you so defensive when people say, Mick Jagger's had one? Paul McCartney may have had one. Oh, Michael Jackson's had one. They don't do it that way. What do they do? They just pick on me like I'm the only one that does it. That's why. So if you, if people said, well, actually, Michael's the same as everyone else, yeah. then it wouldn't upset you so much. It wouldn't upset me so much. You know, if you want to have a facelift, you have a facelift. Yeah, if it makes you happy. 
Regardless of your opinion about the extent of Michael's plastic surgery, one fact is clear. Martin Bashir's TV special made only passing reference to one of the most noticeable differences in Michael's appearance. Bashir quoted people as saying that when Michael Jackson was a boy, he was a black kid. And now as an adult, he looks like a white man. Which was a rumor. They said I was putting on cream to make myself lighter. That's not true. I have vitiligo. You have, now, a, you have a condition. Vitiligo is a medical condition that Jackson claims has afflicted him for more than 20 years. This disfiguring skin disease affects nearly 2% of the world's population and strips all pigmentation from the skin. The result is not just pale, but porcelain white. In the beginnings of the vitiligo happened, started happening relatively early. You know, he, he even was trying to hide it from me. He tried to hide it for quite a while. You know, we'd always try to cover with makeup and even out his skin tone and everything until it just got so extensive. I mean, it's all over his body. We were always trying to hide it and cover it for the longest time until he just had to tell Oprah and tell the world, listen, I'm, I'm not trying to be white. I have a skin disease. The loss of pigment exposes vitiligo sufferers to great risk of skin cancer, requiring constant shade from the sun and thick makeup or sunblock to lessen the exposure. You know, in the beginning, I tried to cover the light spots to the darkest part of the skin, but then it became so extensive that we had to go with the lighter part of the skin because his whole body was reacting. He'd have to be in complete, full body makeup every inch of his body. You know, so it was easier to make the transition to him being to the lighter shade that he is. But for Michael, one of the most painful side effects of vitiligo is the reminder of the earlier skin trauma that humiliated him as a child. You talked about how when you went through adolescence, yeah. you had a, a terrible time. Yeah. And in fact, I had a look at some pictures of mm -hmm. you during that period. Mm -hmm. And you did have a lot of spots. Yeah. Yeah. And being shy as I, I am and was, then even worse than terrible. It was like a disease. Perhaps the most startling omission regarding Michael's history of plastic surgery came during a discussion of the procedures that Michael admits to having. You're saying you've only ever had one piece of surgery on your nose? Two. You've had two? As I can remember. This is where the TV show stops. But had they included Michael's answer from just 10 seconds earlier, they would have allowed him to remind us of a serious injury that severely affected his appearance. No, no, no. I, I was severely burned. Yeah. But apart from having that surgery because of obviously the injury of the fire. January 27, 1984. Michael was shooting a commercial that attempted to duplicate a concert performance. During the last take, a planned pyrotechnic explosion went wrong and ignited Michael's hair on fire. He was so badly burnt on top of he was whole hit the whole top of his head caught fire right in front of my eyes. And I couldn't do anything about it. I couldn't get to him on time. But um, Miko, Marlon Brando's son, was able to push away the barricades and jump on him and put out the fire with his bare hands. He will have nursing and medical personnel on call 24 hours a day. Due to his very excellent health and his very strong personal and religious commitments, he will have as excellent a recovery as is possible. Michael was rushed to the hospital, where he was treated for second and third degree burns. He later underwent skin graft surgery in an attempt to repair the damage. But as we noted, as severe as this incident was, it was completely ignored by Bashir. You had nothing to your cheeks? Uh, no, no, no. These cheekbones? Yeah. No. You haven't had any inserts? No. My father got... What, what, about, what about your Indian, dimple? We have, can we get on with this plastic surgery garbage? This is tabloid stuff. Well... You, you're beyond this. Uh, I know. You're a respected well, journalist. Well, I know. The problem you're is... You're getting tabloid. 
When we return, we'll take another look at some of the answers that were never heard. They call me weird overnight, strange, wacko. You know, um, they said I'm a girl, uh, homosexual. Um, uh, he wants to buy the alpha man bones. He sleeps in a hyperbaric chamber. None of that stuff is true. And some of the differences in opinion. So you're happy you did it now? Yeah, because I've shared. Even though you've been attacked, even though people in America say you shouldn't look after They're your own wrong. children. Yeah, but a lot of people said, leave him alone. Shut the hell up. A lot of people. All caught on Michael Jackson's own camera. When we return to the Michael Jackson interview, the footage you were never meant to see. basic qualities of respected journalism is objectivity. Now, as you may have heard in several recent news stories, one of Michael Jackson's prime complaints about the reporting featured in Martin Bashir's documentary and subsequent interviews with the press was his lack of objectivity. As we've already seen, some of Mr. Bashir's comments that made the air appear to be quite different than opinions he expressed in Jackson's behind-the-scenes footage. About Michael's ranch, Mr. Bashir's on-air comment was, one of the most disturbing things is the fact that a lot of disadvantaged children go to Neverland. It's a dangerous place for a vulnerable child to be. But what he said behind the scenes was this. I was here yesterday and I saw it. And it's nothing short of a spiritually kind thing. This comment about Michael's method of raising children was included on Bashir's special. They are restricted. They are overly protected. I was angry at the way his children were made to suffer. But this was not. Your relationship with your children is spectacular. Um. <laughs> and in fact, it, it almost makes me weep when I see you with them. Another of Jackson's complaints about the documentary is the non-inclusion of certain statements that he feels are pertinent to objective reporting. Like when Bashir devoted almost eight minutes to the abuse by Michael's father? You remember when you said to me that you just wanted to run away from your father? I hid. I used to hide. Just... But did not include this short and revealing comment. He hurt me when he was little, but he's a genius. The man is a genius. On Michael's taking his children to the zoo, Bashir says, it was no kind of trip for two young children, and everyone could see it but Jackson himself. But what you don't hear is Michael's response. I go to the zoo all the time. I go usually when they close it down. And they told us this would be closed down. And as far as probing for the truth about Michael's changing appearance, the subject of vitiligo was virtually ignored. And the severe burns and reconstructive surgery were never mentioned at all. Can we get off this plastic surgery garbage? This is tabloid stuff. Well, you be beyond this. Regardless of whether you feel that Michael Jackson is correct in his assertion that Martin Bashir's documentary was not a true representation of the interviews that actually took place, there is one question that many people share. How could Michael Jackson, a 44-year-old man who has spent most of his life in the spotlight, have allowed himself to open up to a virtual stranger? This footage from Michael's camera may give you a better understanding. Wow. Yeah, that was great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was really, really special. It seems to me that through history, people, they really want to make someone big, and they want to be, oh, this person is so talented, and we've got to make them godlike, and they have to be perfect. And then as soon as they're there, they get more joy in tearing someone down. <coughs> Eventually, when you talk and you say it like it really is, you're, you just light up. That's what, that's what, it's about bringing out what you're about. The, that whole special was, it, it was just an attempt to, 
tear him apart. And he trusted. He trusted uh, Martin Bashir. He and um, it just they took this thing back to the studio and they took a lot of things out and they and the way this thing was narrated, it, it, it was just not fair. Why? Why have you and I spent the last you three years just never hearing that? And then slowly he started bringing his own opinion into the picture. As a reporter, as a news, I like to see the truth, then I'll decide what my take would be on it. Aren't they being on his turf? I'm being, you oh know, you know, yeah. I'm being No, 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 it's not, it's not just well, you though, you can see that. Brashears will come and go, you know? Michael will live forever in everybody's hearts. If indeed this video, whatever it was that was shot, is supposed to be about Michael, then it will show him as a caring, loving, understanding, father, person, human being. Because that's what he is. No matter what you may feel about what you've seen on this program, it's hard to deny that Michael Jackson is a complex and controversial subject who elicits a passionate response from virtually everyone who comes in contact with him, whether through his music or his private life. In the past two hours, our only goal has been to present an objective view of events, showing them as they actually occurred and allowing you to draw your own conclusion. But we do feel it's appropriate to leave you with one more piece of information. Mr. Bashir is quoted as saying, Michael Jackson is a marvelous father to his own children, and I never saw anything that would qualify as a criminal activity. This comes from an interview dated just a few days ago. Thanks for joining us, everyone. I'm Mari Povich. Good night. Do you sometimes despair of human nature? Yes. Yes, of course. I mean, can you any ever do anything that's right? No. No. No, no, no. No matter what you do, there's always a mighty that would say something about it. They have their opinion in it, you know? No matter what you do. No matter how well, how good your intentions are, there's always some jerk, some mean-spirited person to try to bring you down. And you, all you wanted to do is bring some love and some joy, and you know? That's all.